Well, welcome to today's Five on Five. Today we are joined by Kimberly Coops raybeck She is from the University of Oregon School of Law. Kimberly, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Very good. Well, you are going to be talking about uh, She Should Run, this new initiative, and, and something that's really close and dear to your heart. Tell me, first of all, just what She Should Run is all about. I'd be happy to. So She Should Run is a national nonprofit based in Washington, D.C. They're nonpartisan and they're dedicated to eliminating the barriers to women running for office and encouraging more women and girls to see themselves in public leadership. Very good. And what do you all do to encourage women to participate in politics and really get involved? Well, She Should Run's main signature program is Ask a Woman to Run. And it's all about giving you the opportunity to ask women who you know, who you think would be great public servants, to consider running for office. On average, women have to be asked more than seven times to just consider running for office before they actually do consider it. And She Should Run gives you the opportunity to ask a woman to run, and then She Should Run steps in, contacts that woman, and gives her the tools to find her path to public leadership and think about the issues that she cares about. And when she's ready to run, She Should Run is there to help them. Kimberly, talk about some of the barriers that women can face uh, in terms of really getting involved in kind of political leadership. What are some of the, the struggles that can happen? Well, one of the biggest struggles is honestly incumbency. Um, at this point, Congress has historically been male, and we see members of Congress seeking re-election at rates of up to 89% and winning at rates above 90%. So that makes women essentially have to wait for men to retire before they can run themselves. And when girls don't see women running for office while these women are waiting to lead. You have girls who aren't even thinking about running or seeing good role models. They don't know that they even have the opportunity to be able to run. And another barrier that women often face when seeking public office is sexism. Mm -hmm. Women are more likely to be asked about their appearance. Men often aren't asked about their appearance. And She Should Run's uh, Name It, Change It research is all about how sexism actually affects women candidates uh, when they're running. And it actually makes them go down in the polls. But what She Should Run has found is that when you call out that sexism, when you have a third party validator say that that was a sexist comment, or when you have an organization come and say that, it actually brings women back up in the polls. Very good. All right, Kimberly, we're going to learn a little bit more from you after this break. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back. Joined still by Kimberly Coops Rayback. She's here to talk about the initiative She Should Run. Kimberly, we're talking about uh, you know women getting involved in politics. And I'm curious to know what has surprised you most when you speak to women about the potential of them getting involved in political leadership. I think the most surprising thing is how many women haven't ever thought about running for office or don't consider themselves qualified. Women are actually way less likely than men to describe themselves as competitive or qualified or to ever have considered running for office. But even just today, speaking with the women of the Will Council with United Way of Jackson County, these are established community leaders. They're business leaders. They're women who have done great things for this community and made meaningful change. And many of them had never considered running for office before. But those are the people who we need to see running for office. Women are more collaborative, and they're more likely to work across the aisle with um, their counterparts to get things done. And when we see women run, they tend to win at the same rates as men. So we really need to see all of these great community leaders and women who bring unique perspectives and skill sets to the table consider running for office. Very good. And when talking to women about the potential of running for office, is there any kind of preparation for candidacy that you would advise women to kind of adhere to? Absolutely. I think the first thing is honestly going to uh, SheShouldRun.org and checking out She Should Run's incubator. She Should Run has launched this incredible program called the Incubator that helps women who may have never considered running for office find their path and think about the issues that they care about and really think about what their leadership style is and what they can bring to the table. Because if you can't describe why you're running and the issues that you're passionate about and what sort of meaningful change you want to make in your community, you're never going to be able to connect with people about the things that they care about. So definitely doing the She Should Run Incubator program is the first step. It's all online. Women can do it um, in their own time. There's no set schedule. So if you're a mom, if you're a student, if you're someone who works long hours, it's easy to just take the time when you have it to learn about uh, how to be a good leader and the ways that you can consider your path towards running for office. Very good. And Kimberly, a reminder of viewers in case someone wants to learn a little, little bit more where they can get more information. 
That's www.sheshouldrun.org. Very good. Kimberly, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. We'll be right back.